story has been told so many times with the Min Min lights. Right. Yeah. Right? Like, we've heard this so many times. Like, and it's the exact same situation where in the outback, you've got a ball of light that's sometimes white, orange, red, that's following these cars. Now, can we explain the Min Min lights, you know, with a scientific background and, you know, potentially it being a mirage or something like that? Potentially. But, like, we've had these UFO stories for how long in this area? Yeah, it's true. Well, I think I the Min Min lights are a different part of Australia, but that doesn't mean that they couldn't get to the south. I mean, I think most of the Min Min Light reports were in, uh, in Queensland. Yes, yeah, so like but, the other side of the country. But, yeah, but exactly. there have been other ones, right? And if it is a UFO, what would the difference be for a UFO to travel from one area of fucking Australia to the other? And, yeah, and also you have the fact of, like, actual, you know, fate reporting having actual physical contact with whatever was on top of their car like this spongy rubbery that's uh, material that's that you reached out that. there and and she you know she reported touching now i could be like okay maybe like were you touching like a piece of your luggage on the car like i'm not exactly it sure 100 percent how their uh, luggage stuff was arranged on top of the car i don't think they had one of those what is it thule or whatever like the little tortoise shells like least, yeah. yeah it's not you yeah. don't have one of those like you don't have i don't think they had one of those like uh you know like andrew said you know national lampoon style was it just like lashed down on top and she reached out they said like, bungee cables just yeah. stretched over and were the you just touching thing. a suitcase or something like that but she, you know i i am assuming that she knew like what what she would be touching if she were up there so this was out of the ordinary as to what she expected to to touch out there um, she said it was warm and, and she said it was warm enough that like she, she figured that she should have been burned or something like when, when she touched it, like it was hot enough for her to kind of probably either like, you know, jerk her hand Recoil? back. Yeah. Like jerk her hand back or, you know, quickly and pull it back in, probably expecting to be burned. Or how let me, warm let it me was. ask you, let me ask you this, Dan. Yeah. Quick question for you. Sure. You're sitting in the backseat of your car and you go to reach up on the roof yeah. and you feel a fucking even of just a warm spongy wet Anything. something that just landed on your roof uh, how fast do you recoil your hand well i pull that back real fast right like <laughs> yeah, that, that, uh, i'd be like ah yeah. there's something on there it. <laughs> <laughs> um, especially you come back with like soot and shit on your hand you'd be like what the fuck is that yeah. hey, like, honestly in my head soot's the best case scenario to come back on your hand in that situation like this is australia yeah. That could have been a giant anything on your roof that's poisonous so, and wants to kill you. Like, like, the, the, like the, the substance that they're pulling back in uh, off of hand, like I could be like, OK, maybe like you've been you're driving on a desert road. Like if you put your hand outside the car and you, like you touch on top of the car, it's going to have something on your hand. Like mm -hmm. you're going to have you're going to have dust. You're going to have whatever I would assume. Um uh, Yeah. Touching the rubbery thing is what kind of that. Yeah. That's something really weird that it'd be like that's not normal you know when i think about it like like brain said like you're touching like a living thing it's like a like a dolphin if anybody's ever touched like a dolphin or like an underwater you know dolphin or a whale or whatever like if you ever touch yeah. your skin you know it's, it feels like that kind of that's why i imagine in my head it's so, it's something like that um you know maybe it's just a giant flying alien rubber ducky i don't know like you're just sitting on top of the car <laughs> um well um, i i go ahead go ahead then no, go ahead. I was thinking that, like, so for me, I was like, you know, they're getting tailed by this thing. There's, I had two thoughts. I said, like, okay, why would these things be um, going to Australia? And then I thought, you know, like, Australia's got to have one of the most, like, it's got to have some of the most unique biodiversity on Earth that you can't find shit anywhere else. Fucking deadly plants, deadly animals, de reptiles, you know what I mean? So it's like, it would make sense if these things are coming to collect, you know, the, the manzanita bushes in the area that they'd be coming to Australia um, more often than the rest of the world because a lot of these things you can find, it, it, you know, everywhere, different versions. But in Australia, they kind of have, like, isolated stuff. And then I was thinking of these lights when they turned around. If that light is pursuing them still and whatever this is, suction cups their roof because that's what i imagine this sponge thing was doing is it it, it actually like gr gripped the car and lifted it up right this whatever this sponge thing that was on top it wasn't a light it wasn't a hover um and then made me think of like is this some sort of like you know unique craft that is made of biological material right 
The living craft? Like some sort of, exactly, some sort of living craft that picks up their car because maybe, in, hypothetically, say th whatever species this is or whatever alien or whatever technology this is coming, it, this is the first encounter, and maybe it truly thought that these vehicles were organisms, right? Like we're some sort of creature that picks it up, realizes that it's a vehicle, drops it, right? Boom. As it starts to realize that the the occupants are inside. Then it seems to fuck off. Right? So a little, so, it gave it a little taste? Yeah, a little, uh, little, little lick. Text. Lick. Yeah, with its spongy tongue. Uh, and yeah, and there there are a couple other um, when when a number of other outlets like got a hold of this story and like kind of kind of went into it as well. Um, they had some kind of experts lend their their views about possible explanations about what could have done it. Um, one one explanation that I liked was there is um, <laughs> so I, I found out that in Australia. Uh, whirlwinds and sandstorms apparently have the uh, nicknames of Willy Willies. Willy Willies, yeah, that's right. I didn't know that. <laughs> that fits. Yeah, I, fits. I had a good Makes laugh sense. for about three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> about what it was and exactly like it's i had to look at willy. get indoors there's a willy willy <laughs> i read it i read it in an australian periodical like i, I read it in a, like in a, a like an old print magazine that they wrote it and i was like a willy willy i was like is that a real thing is that is that what they're really calling it? and it, it, that sent me down a whole rabbit hole of people like being this i looked up some internet posts and people were like nobody in australia calls a you know a willy like a whirlwind a willy willy and i was like but it's printed right there in australia it's not like an american like said that oh these are also called willy willies it's like no this is this is australian periodical written by australian people <laughs> it's called a willy willy um which is great i i feel like somebody was said like whirlwind and then like an like an aussie in the outback like just couldn't say whirlwind really well willy 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 and it's just stuck i assume it's stuck yeah. ever since it's just, so okay. australia's braden coined it really yeah it's just marble mouth yeah. and just yeah. like yeah. Yeah. just drunk braden trying to yeah making yeah. up words um so uh one of the explanations is that maybe like a, a dust devil whirlwind sent a willy willy got a hold of them like got uh, like they drove through it at late at night you know the early early hours of the morning and it like, got under the car and like picked it up like a little bit is what they're saying. Like the, the kid was just like still booking it. Maybe he got spooked by a, um, it was a type of the Min Min lights, which one of the explanations is like, there's a, a light phenomenon that happens, you know, uh, when you're driving, it could have been, a, I would say like, it'd have to be like a, a bunch of things, not just one explanation for this. It could be like, you know, inverted, uh, you know, temperature inverted lights. I mean, it, the scientific explanations sound weirder than just saying aliens. Like, <laughs> Like right. people, <laughs> this, this is one of those ones where it's like you know you try to you know Occam's razor whatever the simplest explanation is, but then when you start to be like, yeah, a whirlwind of Willy Willy picked up a ve the vehicle. It's like, <laughs> no, there's no fucking way that it would have had to been so fucking goddamn windy out for like, that to pick up a vehicle, right? Um, so yeah, that's an explanation I liked mostly for just the Willy Willy part. I thought that was funny. Um, Another one is there was a there was a lecturer from uh, the University of Wollongong. It's a real place, I guess. Wollongong. I swear to God, I read some of these names on these. I'm like, is this a real place? <laughs> well, there's a place in Australia we talked about before called Humpty Doo. Yeah, so I'm like, are you just possible. making these up <laughs> as we yeah. go along? <laughs> like, I, I feel like somebody was just like driving along. I, and I think it's funny, like the farther away you get from the, you know, the more populous city is like the weirder their names get on the things i felt like they just didn't care like they got to these towns and they just named them whatever like let's well, just name like, this town as stupid as possible or and some of them but some of them I some believe, of them are indigenous names right that's they? what like, i was gonna say it's like a lot of these are indigenous <laughs> a lot of these are indigenous no, names no, what you said is they're stupid that's what you yeah said. <laughs> that's you how no i felt about these stupid names <laughs> that's how i felt originally about it i felt like somebody would say that i thought and then you know i realized i was like no a lot of these names come from indigenous yeah. uh cultures in the area that you know that named these and these these mean <laughs> real things in their language so you yeah. know i learned a little bit and i corrected myself and i put myself in a different <laughs> mind space and I was like, yes, these make a lot more just sense. in the last five hey. minutes yes so, <laughs> holy shit oh, no. holy shit people learn and grow is that crazy that's so nuts yeah. oh my god <laughs> i wonder i wonder what part of this brain's gonna clip <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so 
um, you had this market market. <laughs> you had a lecturer, Glenn Moore, uh, put forth the idea that um, perhaps it was like a meteor that landed in the vicinity. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I know it's annoying to watch these broken up in 10 minute segments, but here's the next one over here. Or if you want to watch the whole thing uncut and after hours, just click this link to our website and uh, give us a donation. You get full access to it on Patreon. Anyways, thanks guys. Enjoy the next video.